would like to take this opportunity to warmly welcome you today. And I would like to greet you in the precious name of our Lord Jesus Christ. We would like to thank you for joining us today in this important study of the word of God which will impact your life on earth and for eternity. In this study, we would like to look at an all-encompassing subject of stewardship. And we ask ourselves, what is this all-encompassing subject of stewardship? Before we get further to explain this important and all-encompassing subject of stewardship, allow me to invite you for a word of prayer. Let us pray together. God, our Heavenly Father, it is a special moment when we commence this important study of stewardship. We know that you have a message for us. And we know you want to bless us. How we invoke upon your spirit within us and wherever our voices can be heard. That Lord, your word will go forth for the edification of many but more importantly for our salvation now prepare us in this message for better service to you in our lives and the lives of others and for your glory in Jesus name whenever the subject of stewardship comes up some people always direct their minds to the aspect of money. Especially with the tithe and offering. But that is a narrow and limited understanding of stewardship. Before we can look at the breadth and width of stewardship. And particularly before I take you into the Bible. Look at this subject of I take some moment with you to roughly look at some of the definitions given about stewardship. I've been able to capture some of these from our dictionaries and our commentaries. One describes stewardship as the conducting, supervising, and management of something. Especially the careful and responsible management of something that has been entrusted into one's care. That is one aspect of understanding stewardship. To conduct, to supervise something that has been entrusted into one's care. Another one describes stewardship as the means and management or care of something particularly caring and managing something that works and this one goes on to say that if your company is making money there is probably has been careful or good stewardship and another one has gone on to describe stewardship as an ethical value 
that embodies the responsibility of planning and management of resources. And one other one has described stewardship as the careful and responsible management of something that has been entrusted in one's care. Then lastly I captured another one that says stewardship is the careful careful and responsible management of all that God has given us. Which include our tangible and intangible possessions. Those are some of the definitions of stewardship. From where we, we, we gather something that has to do with careful management of something entrusted unto another. The word, the word uh, stewardship has its root and origin. And uh, it says stewardship was originally made up of tasks of a domestic steward. From the old English, the word stewardship, stewardship is a compound word. It is composed of the word stig, which means a house a hall or a castle or a palace. And the other word is word, which means a guard, a keeper, or some pretendant. So put together, this simply means uh, a keeper or a guard that takes care of a house, a hall, or a castle, or a palace. Biombibo biga tevi gambo bino. Chiva mwe chia makurunti. Yemu ntwa kumorubidi ove nyumba. Ove chisenga wakunga nilwa. Eda na achira vidi la bongi. In the beginning, the word stewardship referred to household servant duties in terms of food and drink in the palace of the king. The word was later borrowed by the nobility to refer to their homes their managers and housekeepers of those who were rich and of noble class. And later on, it's the one that was brought to all managers who were managing things on behalf of others. And so stewardship as a word has its origin within the household setting. And the household setting from the palace of the king coming all to the nobility now to the common person. Having seen the word uh, stewardship from that broad width and, 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 and length and from its root, we would like to look now at stewardship from the biblical perspective. The Bible has its own definition and concept of stewardship. 
Bible na yeri ne nyinyonyola yayo eye kigambo kino eche byobuwanika. One upon which we want to dwell upon for this week's study. Chetwagala okulabanga tuchitunulira week eno yonna mu byokuyiga bitula abantu. Let us begin with the biblical origins of stewardship. Katutandike ngo tulaba ensibuko zo ye kigambo kino echo buwanika mu Bible. The Bible says Bible. in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. Cholubelebeje katonda yatonde gulu nensi. That text alone gives us the understanding that the world is created by God. In the beginning, Genesis 1:1, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And from there, Genesis continues on to tell us the progress of creation and organization of the heavens and the earth in seven days. We to simbuka o to genda to lava in take a take a na mutaika katonda je ya kola munako msamvu. We That's see okay. that day one God creates the, the light. Let there be light. Day two God comes and creates the firmament, the earth to separate from the, the heavens to separate from the, the earth. We come to day three and God creates the animal, the, 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 the plant kingdom, the vegetation. And on day four, God comes to create what we can call the terrestrial the rest of your bodies, that is the sun, the moon, and the stars. And day five, God comes and creates the sea creatures. And on day six, God comes and creates all the land animals. And after creating land or creatures, on the sixth day, he ends with the creation of a human being. And then day six, the day seven, God created the holy time. And he called it the Sabbath. And so for the entire week, God was creating and organizing. And that is why the psalmist in chapter 24 verse 1 comes and tells us that the earth is the Lord's and all its fullness the world and all those who dwell in it. So you ask yourself, in all this creation account, where does stewardship come into the picture? God is the creator of the universe. He, in the beginning, he created the heavens and the earth. And then in the six, seven days he comes to organize and create the earth. He creates the things of the earth and he creates those on the land and he creates those in the sky. This world and its fullness including man which all belong to God by the right of creation and sustenance. This world was bestowed into the care and keep of man and woman. And that's where we get the element of stewardship. That God conceives the idea of creating a world. He fills it up with creatures. But after he had seen everything and qualified it as good, he comes and raises up a certain other creature called a human being. And he bestows the care 
keeping and responsibility of that world in the hands of man. Bwacho nali okabundugula obulabirizi no bukumi no kulabirira obonna byenshi ekyo. And so verse 28 verse 26 to 28 of Genesis chapter 1. Lulelebye sulemu olinyo rabiri mu mukago kweyongera kupaka ku rabiri mu munana tuli ne bigamba bigamba bwe. He says 26 then God said let us make man in our own image according to our likeness. Katonda nayo gera tukole omuntu mu ngeri yafe mu let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth and every creeping thing. So here, God is saying, Let us create man for the purpose of him having dominion over what he had created. And so this tells you, therefore, that God is giving what is his by right of creation to the hand of man. So verse 26, God is conceiving the idea of creating a human being to have dominion over his creation. And verse 27 says, so God created man in his own image, in the image of of God, he created him male and female, he created them. And so verse 27, God translates the idea that he had conceived in 27, in 26, now into reality. And now, from in verse 27, we are sure we have seen the, 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 the real creation of a human being. Male and female, in the image and likeness of God. But verse 28, then God blessed them. And God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue. Have dominion over the fish of the sea. Over the birds of the air. And every living thing that moves on the earth. This text of 20, verse of 28 now comes for God to come and address the human beings that he had created. He is commissioning the giving the stewardship element of what he had created now into the hand of the human being who is now listening and before him. And, and now he tells men how the stewardship of the world is going to be. How, what he expects man to do in pretending over the world that God had created. Remember, God has created this world and organized it in seven days. Into three spheres. The sphere of the space above. And he populated that one with the birds of the air. And he has also populated Populated it with the sun, moon, and stars. That is the sphere of the world above. And then he goes beneath the world. And in the water. In the soil. There he also puts and populates it with the sea creatures and all things below the earth. And then he comes on the surface of the earth and there he creates 
all land creatures and including man. These three spheres are populated and he gives all these three spheres with their population, with their fullness into the hand of man to pretend over. That is where we get the element of stewardship in the Bible. Now that God is the owner. He is the creator. He is the sustainer. But now he brings man into the picture that what belongs to him by creation and sustenance he bestows into the hand of man. And now man becomes a steward. But a steward of God. He becomes a steward to take care of God things on behalf of God. This text therefore gives us the biblical foundation of stewardship. It forms the tenets and parameters of stewardship. And it, gives, it goes on to tell us what stewardship is all about. Number one, stewardship is about management. And he says, let us create man in our own image for them to have dominion over the fish of the, of the sea, the birds of the air, and everything that moves on the earth. So man's stewardship goes into the management of the three spheres and their fullness. And he's telling man, go and have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and everything that moves on the earth. To have dominion is to have management. To have dominion is to pretend over. To have dominion means to be on top or above the things that have been put under you. But one thing that I want us to notice that stewardship and the management is bestowed to man puts him in the middle and he is in the middle above of above that which has been bestowed to him the three spheres and their fullness but to also realize that he is in the middle because above him is the owner and the creator God that therefore introduces us to another tenant of stewardship. Which is one of relationship between the owner the, and the owned. Chino chitutu sa kunkola gana wakati wananyini nebyo biyatonda. And that tells you, therefore, that stewardship has to position someone in the fulcrum and middle of activities. He has been given responsibility from the owner. 
and is acting over, pretending over certain things which belong to the owner. Stewardship therefore is about relationships. How to manage if, effectively these relationships. And we also get to realize that this therefore brings an element of trust as another tenant of stewardship. And this element of trust is one that requires faithfulness and honesty. And so when you are a steward, you have been given something in trust. And that trust invested in you by the owner is one that needs to be guarded jealously in order to continue to have a bearing and a likeness to the, to the owner. And so we also get to see that when someone gives you the thing to take care of in trust, it's an element of love and, and, and care from the owner. It's about loving kindness of the owner toward the manager. And therefore, because of all that, there is a bar of expectation leveled upon the manager by the owner. And 1 Corinthians chapter 4 verses 1 and 2 clearly spells it out. Paul writes and says, let a man so consider us. As servants of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. There is an element, a serious tenant of, of mystery in stewardship. And these mysteries are embedded in what we see and what we cannot see. In the tangible, the tangible and the untangible. So Paul is writing and says, consider us as servants of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. And then verse 2 says, Moreover, it's required in stewardship that one be found faithful. Therefore, if it's about management, if it's about relationships, if it's about trust. It's about loving kindness. Faithfulness should be the bedrock upon which all these things of stewardship needs to be premised. And when we are giving, when, when we are given the responsibility of stewardship. As we have seen in our definitions before. It's about conducting, supervising and management something carefully and responsibly. It means taking care of something and managing it to its best expectation. 
Because we have seen that stewardship has been described as a careful and responsible management of something entrusted to someone. And therefore, when we are given stewardship, we are also given how to take care of it. The master will always come out to tell you how to manage that which he has given you. It is not good for you to take care of something you don't understand. It is not good of the owner to give stewardship over something and the manager has not been given how to take care of it. In our studies that shall follow, we shall look at how God in his loving kindness has bestowed the responsibility of this world in our care. And then how he expects us to expedite and work out that responsibility on his behalf. Let us pray together. God our heaven father. Thank you for bringing to us one more time your revelation about our responsibility in the subject of stewardship. Thank you, Father, that you can be able to meet with us to remind us what our role, expectation, and functions are in this area of stewardship. May you continue to talk to us. May you continue to reveal your will to us. And may you make us live according to expectations of us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.